Hey, Dave Lacalle with Head Games Motorworks. Today we are going to discuss a BMW S55 that came back after years of road racing. Check it out. Now this head received our BMW S55 CNC port. We do the intake, exhaust, combustion chamber, the whole nine yards and the car made 900. Now, 900 might seem a lot for a road race situation, and well, it is. So he didn't always run it at 900, the car just made some power, and um, but there was a twist. So now he decided to put a Shrek cam in there, and a Shrek cam uh, needed a different valve spring. So he changed the valve springs, the head went to somebody else. That shop put guides in a valve job and supposedly fixed the head fixed the valve job and he had some issues so he came back here and uh, so now we're going to inspect it and I'll show you what they did what we did the whole night. Now the intake ports look great I didn't see anything really uh, to worry about and the combustion chambers the car looks like it's running really really well what I did notice right off the bat is the valve job so this shop decided to do a valve job they said they're going to fix the head games valve job and i guess their way of fixing it is they made it one angle so there's no angles here now there's only the 45 degree angle here and it's at the edge and i just don't understand how doing a one angle valve job is actually fixing something the thing to understand here is that a valve seat is basically a heat sink it's going to take the heat out and it dissipates it into the cylinder head. When we take all the material out of it, it's going to hurt that property of it. And the other problem with this is they basically killed the flow. It is not going to like having one angle. Multiple angles are always the way to go if you're going to do a valve job. Obviously, they didn't get that memo. On the exhaust port, I really didn't see anything to yell about. This thing looks pretty good. I cannot complain. It looks like it's running very well. Uh, there is some carbon to be expected. I think maybe my man Dan should uh, be racing a little hard on it. Maybe a little harder. I don't know. So this thing sees hours of in and out of full throttle, many, many seconds of full throttle, and it has three thousand miles of hard hard driving on the road race it's not a street car at all on the valve side i seen a lot of valve float and there were some valves that are bent disformed and that's from a lot of heat and uh from valve float now you'll see it on the tip of the valve here so you look at the tip of the valve there is a little indentation and that's from the rocker hitting the valve basically when it's out of time it's now slamming things and it creates a little wear mark in all of the tip of the valves you can also see it on the valve itself there's like a little shelf here it's nothing too crazy uh, this is the intake valve and um, it, it didn't really show that much wear i think for what it's gone through i mean listen road race stuff is not it's not nice to anything but you see the exhaust valve looks pretty good after all these years, but there absolutely is some valve float. And I think that's because the valve spring just wasn't up to the task of what this thing was going through. Now, when the head left here, it left with our cylinder head package. We only have one and we had a valve spring for the S55 that we developed many years ago. But the issue is on paper that the valve spring could coil bind with using a Shrek cam. So the Shrek cams have 10.6 millimeter lift, OEM has 10 millimeter lift. So we only designed it for the stock cam. And uh, well, so they went to a SuperTech spring kit and the SuperTech spring kit is just, uh, it has less pressure than, uh, than ours. So I think the best way to do this is we'll go out to the valve spring tester and uh, I'll give you guys a better synopsis. It's easy to see just looking at it that they are two different shapes. So you have a cylindrical spring to the left, and that's the head game spring. And you have a conical spring to your right, that is the SuperTech. In all actuality, they're both SuperTech springs, but one is ours. But the single cylindrical spring from head games just had a lot more cushion for the pushing. 
So right off the bat, when I started doing SCT5 heads, or we started doing SCT5 heads, and we had to come up with a spring kit because nothing was available, uh, I approached SuperTac and we found a spring, but we had to, to get a retainer made. And um, it was made for a thousand horsepower plus because that is our customer. When you get into the higher horsepower ranges, when you get 800 above, it takes a, a decent amount of spring pressure to keep the whole valve train happy. And uh, that's what we accomplished. Now, I'm not saying that this spring is bad. I'm just saying that it has, or I should say the SuperTech spring um, from SuperTech for this application is not bad, but it is different. And um, this is what I'm going to show you. Iron spring stalls at 1381, and you have 10 millimeter of lift. Now we're going to press this down. So we have 95 pounds on the seat, 206 open, and we're 42 thousandths away from Quobide with a spring rate of 279. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the lift on the exhaust of the Shrek cam, which is the largest of the cams. Um, so that's at 417 lift, which is 10.6 millimeter. I'm going to go here. Now you see the clearance, the clearance to Quobide is very, very tight. 24 thousandths. That would just not work. So when these cams came out, I put up some stuff to say, hey, this cam uh, should not work with our spring. But guys like Keys Motorsports and a bunch of other guys, they all ran our spring. They never took the springs out and they ran these cams and nobody had the problem. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that's true lift. I can't tell because on paper or right here, it just simply doesn't work. How they didn't fail, I can't tell you that. Now we're going to try the SuperTech spring, and it installs at 1.437, which is 36 and a half millimeter. And we're going to press the magic button. Now we have 88 pounds on the seat and 158 open, 188 thousandths away from Quobine, and 168 is the spring rate. So what this tells us is that our spring, um, it has 10 more pounds on the seat, it has 40 more pounds open, and the spring rate is just way better. The spring rate is going to dictate how much RPM you can run, and uh, this thing just freaking kills it, I think. Um, but the distance to cool bind is also an issue, even though, so ours is really tight, theirs is very loose. It's been my... Uh, experience that when you have too much clearance to coil bind that the spring will just act like a slinky and you never want a slinky. So what we have done is come up with an alternative for the future. Now we got a spring here. This is from GSC Power Division and uh, I'm going to stick it in here. This is their conical spring. We installed it at 1408. This is at the max lift 417. Put the magic button in there. You can see now we're at 102 on the seat. We are 203 open. We have 107 thousandths to coil bind and a spring rate of 243. And this is going to give Dan all the cushion for the pushing. So overall, I think the head came out pretty good considering it didn't have our spring kit anymore. And uh, Neanderthals worked on it and changed the valve job. Killing flow. That is actually something we cannot fix. You can't. You can always take it out. You can't put it back in and we're not going to put all new seats in this thing to save it. So what my man's going to do is we're going to refresh this thing and he is going to keep it as a spare. He's going to send us a brand new head and that way we can do all of our stuff to it and he has something reliable for years. One thing I wanted to address about this cylinder head is I found out that uh, from the customer that when he took it to this other shop, they had, I guess, looked around it and said, man, this looks a lot like ours put it on their CNC machine, digitized it, and then overlaid it on their cylinder head and told the customer, this is our head. Head Games must have copied it. And it really upset me because, A, not to toot the own horn or pat yourself on the back, bad mofo here. And I really don't need to copy something from somebody else make it poor. I would never feel right about it because I'm an honest person and I have talent. Only non-talented people are going to have to copy 
because they don't have the talent to get there. So they're going to copy something that is better than theirs. I also know that we were first to market with this particular combination, uh, with the port, with the bow spring. There was actually nobody around when we did it. And I just don't get how they were to say it. Now, this company, I also feel like they had already taken one of our ports for a different application, uh, completely separate from BMW. I saw it at a trade show and I said, man, that looks like our port, it's just bigger. So to me, they already have that, that reputation. And I just wanna say guys, if you're, you never know what you're getting, right? So you're always buying in the idea of somebody and you're always buying the idea of a particular shop. So the, some shops might feel like it needs to be bigger or smaller or whatever it is. And obviously like they felt like they were fixing this thing. And I think that they killed the flow because they killed the valve job. And I feel like they'll do the same thing on the port so they could steal the port, but you can't steal the whole package and you can't steal the, the experience of head game. Now, although they might have some experience in BMWs, they do a variety of different things, and I don't think that they are up to the head game standard of what we can put out, and um, that's all I gotta say about that. I just think if they were to go through all the trouble of putting it on their machine, so like I'm a cylinder head porter, and I know if it's our head by walking up to it. I don't have to put it on a machine to see if it's ours, this sounds like to me that they were trying to make what they were doing. Um, maybe uh, it was right in their head by like, oh, it's ours. And then they go and put it on their machine. Digitizing doesn't take like 15 minutes. We're talking hours, maybe even a couple days of just trying to see if we stole their port when you could just look at it. And that's how I feel like if you're not talented enough or you're not, um, you don't know your product well enough to walk up to it and know that it's yours, something's fishy there. And you have to watch out for those kind of people who don't know their work. How can you not know your work? All right, that does it for me today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Tell me what you want to see. Toodles.